Oh, yeah! What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to The Fringe. We have to talk about it again. I really didn't want to. I really was hoping this would just go away. But we all know Justin Trudeau's virtue signaling and money laundering schemes have no limits. Now, of course, Justin Trudeau this last week heading off to the G7 while he's flying across the skies, emitting his carbon and telling us all plebs that uh, if we're going to burn the world if we go on our vacations this summer. You all remember what good old Mark had to say in the House of Commons when it came to, oh, you're 10 hours of no bathroom breaks. You're going to watch the world burn, but it's okay, everybody. Don't worry about climate change. Well, Justin Trudeau has no problem jet-setting all over the world to stroke his ego, if that's a nice way of putting it. Uh, but he also heads over to the G7 to contribute $5 billion to help the Ukraine using frozen Russian assets. So if they're unfrozen, do we get that money back? I don't think so. Probably not. I'm sure just like every other dime that has been given to launder within the Ukraine, that there is no strings attached to this money. This is insanity. At a time where our own people cannot buy groceries, they can't even get to work, they can't afford to fill their cars with fuel, they can't even feed their kids. The government had to come up with their nonsense and wasted, because we all know nothing's going to come from it, school lunch program. Uh, housing accelerator funds, billion dollar contracts given out, to McKinsey, Dalian, GC Strategies, you name it. This is just another cherry on top of the old shit Sunday. Five billion more to launder in the Ukraine. Um, Canada has agreed to contribute five billion dollars to a new plan, a major loan, loan, again, I doubt we'll see a penny of it back, to help Ukraine in its fight against Russia. Prime Minister Justin Trudeau and the other world leaders attending G7 Summit in Italy have struck a new deal to use frozen Russian assets to help Ukrainian President Vladimir Zelensky after Russian gains on the battlefield. Trudeau met one-on-one -on -one with Zelensky at the summit. They probably uh, talked about snowboarding, if you know what I mean, and said Canada has the first country to announce its contribution to the agreement. Zelensky said the idea is to use the assets that has been on the table since the start of the war and Canada was first to move on it. Of course we are. Of course we are, because they have to virtue signal. They have to <laughs> launder money, right? They have to keep up with the scheme. Thank you for your loud voice, Selinsky told Trudeau. Of course, thank you. Thank you for the free money. Uh, it will help Ukrainians not only to the battlefield, but also in reconstruction. What happened to all the other money we gave the Ukraine? What happened to all the property that Zelensky is purchasing around the world? What happened to... The, the extravagant shopping trips him and his wife took in Paris. Are we starting to get mad yet, ladies and gentlemen? Are we starting to get fed up with what's going on here? Our borders are open. Canada is unrecognizable. We have crime at all-time highs. We've got unaffordability and inflation at all-time highs. We have people bankrupting and, and foreclosing on their mortgages at all-time highs. And rather than give any kind of peace or respite to Canadians to try to make amends for the difficult times ahead. Ah, we'll give $5 billion to another country. Because why should Canadians benefit? Biden said, <laughs> I'm sure Biden said a lot of things, uh, the plan will put money to work for Ukraine and send another reminder to Putin that we're not backing down. Good. Well, I'm so glad we're not backing down financially because that would make sense financially for, for the rest of uh, Canada, wouldn't it? Uh, Cynthia, I don't care what her last name is. Canada's Sherpa overseeing negotiations and helping draft the G7's final uh, communique said everyone around the table agrees Russia is causing damage. They need to pay. Um, no, our government needs to fix the damage they're causing to us. Canada first. There was a lot of conversations and Canada was one of the very easily or one of the early, probably easily players to talk about how we could design this to make this feasible. She said the loan is to be delivered by the end of the year and will go towards military aid, humanitarian support, reconstruction efforts in the Ukraine and Vladimir uh, Zelensky's pockets. 
Russia's foreign ministry immediately fired back, calling the loan plan an illegal initiative and warning retaliatory measures will be extremely painful. That sounds fun. The G7 deal comes at a time when Ukraine is in dire need of more weapons, ammunition, and training after a long lull in deliveries from Washington. U.S. Congress approved a 61 billion U.S. military aid package for Ukraine last month, but only after political conflict with the Republican Party delayed the package for six months. Again, blame the Republicans, right? Oh, we just damn them for wanting to make sure Americans are looked after in a time when our country's going to hell. Uh, guys, we're so sorry we couldn't give you $61 billion. Come on. Defense Minister Bill Blair met with the Ukraine Defense Contract Group in Belgium on Thursday and announced plans to send the first shipment of 2,000 decommissioned rocket motors used by the Royal Canadian Air Force to Ukraine. Notice I said farce there because that's what this is. Canada will also donate close to 30 Nanak remote weapon systems, which is a remotely controlled weapon station that can be used on armored vehicles. Blair also said the government is sending more than 130,000 rounds of small arms ammunition to the Ukraine troops. Well, because we've banned all the guns here, right? So might as well uh, send it all over there. Canada has also announced sanctions against 11 people and 16 entities connected to Russia's military industrial complex, the Prime Minister's office said in a news release Thursday. They include entities involved in circumventing sanctions on Russian oil. Trudeau took part in a series of working sessions on Thursday with G7 leaders about the conflicts in the Ukraine and Gaza, along with the development in Africa and climate change, of course, because... You know, more needs to uh, launder money. He also had bilateral meetings with French President Emmanuel Marcon and German Chancellor Olaf Schlotz. Schultz, sorry. I didn't say Schlotz. Now over here you can see, look at look at how happy these two are to see each other, eh? Like old long-lost friends. Of course, Justin Trudeau's ego tweeting out, Today I gave $5 billion more of your tax dollars to President Zelensky. Volume up and listen to me tell him, I can never get enough hugs from you. If you're wondering why nobody takes me seriously on the world stage, it's because of my socks and comments like this. I couldn't agree more. This is disturbing on all fronts. It's never going to end. Uh, buckle up. Because until Jugmeet Singh gets off his high horse and says, I don't approve of the uh, meddling in foreign <laughs> entities of this country, and I'm actually going to vote against Justin Trudeau instead of continue to support him, this is what we're going to see. We're going to see more bleeding and hemorrhaging of Canadian taxpayer dollars. We're going to see things get drastically worse for Canada, as we've also committed to bring over, I think it's 100,000 families from Gaza, where we're just... We're just giving everybody everything. It's like a it's like a going out of business sale. We're just liquidating our assets one by one, at least anything that's left in this country to make it non-identifiable as Canada anymore and to keep us down with their boots on our necks and poor. Let me know what you guys think down below in the comments. I'm sure everybody's just as happy as I am to see this $5 billion going out. If you enjoyed this video or at least enjoyed the commentary because there's nothing to enjoy about this video, Make sure to hit that subscribe button and turn your bell on for notifications. Join us live here each and every Friday on the channel for Friday Night Fringe, our Friday night live stream, starting at 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central here on the channel. We go over everything that's happened in the past week in politics. Sometimes I get on some rants, who knows, but we have a lot of back and forth within our community. And I always look forward to hearing what each and every one of you has to say each and every week. Definitely the highlight of my week, and I hope to see you all there this upcoming Friday, again at 6 p.m. Pacific, 8 p.m. Central, here on the channel. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as you could, and have a great rest of your day. I'll catch you on the next one.